Hey everyone, how you doing? So, Pizza Tower is a game with quite the development history. Oh yeah, and also, grass is green. Yeah, of course people know this. It's one of the most well-known things about the game, and while I would love to cover some of the history behind the game traditionally, I think we can do something a little more interesting here. So, with that being said, in today's video, I'm dumping trivia and fun facts on you guys. The catch? I'm doing three for every level and every floor in the game besides the limited time ones. That might seem a bit odd, but I promise you this is being done this way for a reason. So without any further ado, let's jump right in. We'll start with floor one, and we're immediately going to start with a fun fact that almost wasn't exclusive to this world initially. See, the secret room on floor one has a few unused enemies hanging around, which is neat trivia in of itself. But something else here that might shock you is that this cheese dragon in particular was once actually in every floor secret room, all the way up to one of the last builds before launch. I have no idea why this was the case, but it's a super neat fact regardless. The second fact here is that this is the first playable room in the game. Okay then. Boring. But it wasn't always this way, as earlier builds had you in different rooms, so yeah. This one is just one that I had to throw into the video. As for the final piece of trivia, this floor has the most levels in the game, which is 7 normally. The Tutorial, John Gutter, Pizzascape, Ancient Cheese, Blood Sauce Dungeon, Pepperman's Fight, and Secrets of the World, which is accessible on any floor. And if we did count it, the limited time levels would also be on this floor, so that counts too. Okay, as for the first level, it's the tutorial, technically. And admittedly, there's not a whole lot here. The first fun fact is that this is the only pizza time where you don't get hunted down by Pizza Face, because there's no timer. It's something that I feel like a lot of people gloss over, but it's a very interesting piece of trivia regardless. To add on to that, this is also the only level that doesn't give you any progression at all, which is stuff like a combo and points. It makes sense in context of the level, but it's still neat. And finally, in order to unlock lap 2, you have to beat the tutorial in under 2 minutes. I wasn't aware of this at all, probably because I almost immediately knew how to play. But in any case, it's weird how that works, and it makes me wonder if some people beat this game without ever having access to lap 2. Huh. John Gutter. Oh wow. This level actually has a lot of good trivia, so it made choosing just three pieces to be pretty difficult. But since I had to... Starting out, this level's tile set has been used since the very first public build of the game, no joke. This 2018 test build right here has it all, albeit slightly different. In any case, it's really neat to see how dedicated the Tour de Pizza team was to this tile set. It barely saw any changes. Also, this level once had some pretty crazy plans. At one point in development, defeating the noise would have apparently made this level permanently switch to a noise-themed one, which is pretty neat. But why? I mean, it's funny, but why was this conceptualized to begin with? And finally, just to make this easy, this is one of the only two levels in the game that you absolutely need to get lap 2 on in order to get all achievements. Yes, you could break all wood blocks in Gnome Forest without getting the lap 2, by the way. That's kind of insane, especially considering how it's the first true level in the game. That's just cruel. Pizzascape is one of my favorite levels in the game, so I went out of my way to pick some of the more interesting facts here. And immediately, this trivia is counterintuitively kind of boring, but... This is the only level in the game that has to share a secret theme with another level, that being Pizza Scare. Now we could also add on that Pizza Scare was once a hard mode variation of this level, but that's something we can discuss later. Next up, Pizza Escape is also the first level in the game to have a transformation, multiple main songs in the level itself, and keys. Cool. And finally, according to one of the early concept arts for the night transformation here, the knights take dumps in their suits. Oh, okay then, thanks for the info. Ancient Cheese is a fun level to discuss because it's just unique, I guess. 
So why don't we dive in to see what I mean? We'll start with the trivia piece provided by the same guy who worked on my first Pizza Tower video's thumbnail, Dr. Dan. So this level has a fully tiled unused room that's super small, but basically the room would have used an old version of the bomb transformation, one where you would have been launched in the direction of your choice after it blew up. But even now, the room is still very beatable because you can actually uppercut the bomb to explode the stupid rat. I won't be talking about unused rooms too much more in the video, but this is a general exception because I thought it was pretty interesting. Again, Dan was the one who told me about this, as well as the other unused rooms you'll see later in the video. He's awesome. Next up, this is the only level in the game as of now that actually got a pizza time nerf. Instead of it being 2 minutes and 50 seconds, it's nowadays 3 minutes. Personally, I don't see what the fuss about the old time limit was, but still, whatever. And finally, Ancient Cheese has a lot of small references to old art pieces in ancient times, such as this spoof on a thinker, and the background is also littered with vases and statues mimicking Pizza Tower characters. It's not much, but I figured it'd be interesting to talk about. Blood Sauce Dungeon is my favorite level on this floor, so I'm gonna give it some respect. Starting out, this level has objectively the worst secret in the game. I'm just kidding. We'll actually try to discuss some real trivia here. Starting out honestly, this level's music isn't entirely its own. This is pretty well known at this point, but that one section in the track that suddenly shifts to a completely different song is actually a reference to Teeth Dust in the Strong Cold. This song is for a level that didn't make it into the final game, Stronghold. It's a really interesting trivia piece, and it's neat to see that this cut level did end up having some influence in the final product. Next up is a piece of trivia that has to do with that influence, and it's music based too. So, Metaphobia. It's that one song that plays whenever you're near Pillar John in a level. Now, it's kind of interesting on its own, I guess, but there would be no reason to bring it up unless something really interesting connects to it. And something does. See, this level was originally supposed to have Metaphobia exclusively. Why that was the case is something that I will never truly understand, and clearly the developers noticed it too, so it was changed. But look, here it is in the Sage 2019 demo. And finally, this is the longest level vertically in the game, as it has 9 whole rooms that connect vertically, including the bottom floor's first room. 9. That's insane to me. For some context, even the only other big vertical level, Peppybot Factory, has like 5. The jump here is insane. We're doing boss fights here too, if floors could count then this is fair game as well. First off, this is probably very obvious, but do you see that shoulder tackle? Hmm, that reminds me of a certain guy. I think his name is Luigi? Yeah, no, this is clearly a reference to the iconic shoulder bash move in the Wario Land games. I really like how it's done here too, the animation for it is ingrained into my brain now. On top of this, a lot of Pepperman lore has been randomly dropped by McPig throughout Pizza Tower's development. As some examples, Pepperman's full name is Phil Pepperman, and he apparently also sounds very similar to the video game store guy. Not sure why you'd want to know that, but now you do. And finally, Pepperman has the most HP per phase out of every boss in the game, sitting at 10. For reference, most bosses have 8 per phase, even Pizza Face himself. Interesting. Alright, moving on to floor 2, we'll try to pick up the pace here just a little bit. Starting out, the secret room on this floor has a meatball boulder enemy, which was once planned to be in the actual game. This guy's history is pretty colored, but nowadays, he's just not doing anything. Okay then, at least it reacts to ground bounce. Next up, Pepperman is seen on this floor spraying some graffiti on one of the walls, and it's not exactly painting Pepino out as a good guy. And finally, because it's really difficult to find any trivia on these floors, uh, this pizza granny goes on a long tangent about the tower? Cool. This level is whatever, we'll breeze through quickly. Starting out, this level has the least represented level music in the entire game, specifically the track Oregano UFO. This track is used in technically only two rooms, which, yes, is even less than the likes of Pizza Engineer and On the Rocks. Two rooms. That is such a shame because the music here is actually really good too. 
Next up, this is also one of the earliest conceptualized levels in Pizza Tower, like John Gutter. I know it's a bit boring, but there's not much else to say about the level. Though, I guess, interestingly enough, there was a time when one of the unused enemies, the Camembert Squire, was actually used in one of the food marts. Cool, I guess. This level. Wow, there's actually a bit to talk about. So, starting out with a bang, Gustavo and Mr. Stick don't appear in this level at all to guide Pepina towards the exit during pizza time. Hmm, <clears throat> what's his? Hmm. <clears throat> Also, the third background for this level has a figure wearing a slipper that looks like Snick, who is basically Pizza Tower's spoof on Sonic. If you're interested in this little guy, I highly recommend looking into it more for yourself. He's super interesting. And finally, Amogus. <laughs> okay, this isn't 2020, it's not funny anymore. Anyways, the Mushroom Ghost in this level once actually had more than one appearance in the game, as it was also in Don't Make a Sound, and even in some destructible John Blocks, which are no longer being used. Neat stuff. I hate Mort, but regardless, we'll talk about the level. So starting out, the level's main gimmick, Mort, is actually from a completely different game called Mort the Chicken, which was released for the PS1 in 2000. This is a game that has very mixed reviews, but yeah, essentially the reason why Mort's even here is because Mick Pig asked if he could be, and he was just allowed to be put in. Well, I'm glad that worked out for them, even if I still cannot stand Mort, I will punch. Next up, this level also has a weird secret revolving around Mort's game. Or, well, his render. See, there's a secret room that you can access during Mort's first transformation, and if you time your jump just right, you can reach this little area that has a spinning cube with Mort's face on it. This is one of the goofiest things I've ever seen in this game, which is really saying something, but it's pretty funny regardless. Finally, this level has a scrapped sun sprite that ended up being reused in a title card for Don't Make a Sound, though it's winking here, so it's slightly different. Still though, very pointless and fun trivia. Yeehaw! I have been doing YouTube for too long because I know exactly what type of energy my mic wants to pick up. <laughs> I wish I could be more enthusiastic, I really do. Anyways, starting out, this level is a massive retooling of another level that never made it into the game, Space Pinball. The only reference of that level in the game nowadays also exists here, in the form of a poster that has a flaming olive with the old level's text written on it. Also, the second background in this level has a ton of characters on it, just chilling and drinking. The order from left to right on top is Pillar John, a Little John, a Potato Farmer, Gustavo and Brick, Pizza Face, and Noisette, and on the bottom, we have a Pizza Box Goblin and a Pepperoni Goblin, a Flying Anchovy, Jerome, and a Noise Goblin. Oh my god, so many faces. And to round out this floor's main levels, this level's window name is Getting Drunk in the Pizza Tower. Yeah, I haven't been talking about these level window names for a good reason. It'd be boring if we discussed all of them. But this one is funny, so it's fine. The Vigilante Boss Fight Okay, besides the absolute banger of a song used here, there's actually not much to say. But in any case, we still have some interesting trivia to discuss. First of all, the Vigilante was literally born out of boredom. See, McPig was tired of drawing Pepino, so he just drew a cheese slime with a hat for a Mega Man 8-bit deathmatch mod. And apparently, he liked the design so much that he decided to throw it into the game. Now isn't that something? Also, this boss fight won't start at all until Pepino picks up the gun the Vigilante throws at him. According to the wiki, this could be a reference to Kirby and Meta Knight's dynamic with their fights, but uh, I think that's looking into it too far. Oh, but finally, this is the first time in the game where you pick up a gun as Pepino. It's basic, but honestly, I don't want this video to be me entirely reading off the wikis, so this will do. Ooh, I love this floor. Too bad there's not much going on trivia-wise, but we'll talk about what we can anyways. First of all, the secret on this floor leads to a room with a circus aesthetic going on, as well as a clown transformation. This is a reference to a cut part of a level in the game where you'd be running around in a circus. The only interesting part about this cut theme to me is that the music for it actually gets reused when you escape the tower at the end of the game. Not kidding. Though for our second piece of trivia here, there's a TV screen that goes unused for the clown transformation due to the HUD being blocked while you're driving the clown car. Look at how sad he is, I, I feel bad. Finally, this floor's achievement room background is almost entirely space themed for some reason. Yeah, you can tell that these floors are starting to get difficult. Yeah. 
Crest Cove is a really interesting level for trivia, so let's jump right in. First of all, I just saw this and had to throw it in because it's so random, but apparently, that's not Pepino on the title card. That's an ancestor. Why? I don't know, but Mickpig said so, so I'm just gonna take his word for it here. It's weird. Also, the goblin captain that this level once had looked pretty different, too. Like, almost completely different. Wow, that is, uh, almost jarring? But in any case, apparently this one was bigger too, which sucks. And finally, this level has a unique mechanic involving the chest enemy that you run into once or twice in Gnome Forest. For those who don't know, this enemy is also here too, only you have to slam the ground that's marked with X's in order to actually find it. This is something I actually didn't know for the longest time when I was playing the level, which is pretty embarrassing. Oh, and speak of the devil, Gnome Forest. I'm gonna give my biggest regards for this level because it's something special. First of all, the title card. Yeah, would you believe me if I said there's actual history behind the card? So, in the stream where it was made, initially Pepino and Gustavo looked pretty normal, but it was eventually changed later in the same stream, which is really funny to me. I just can't imagine this card without the goofy gnome aesthetic, it just doesn't hit the same. Also, this is the first level to include Gustavo and Brick. And while we could say a lot about them, I actually think the old history with this level is far more interesting. Have you ever looked at a lot of the sections with Gustavo and Brick, and thought about if they were actually meant for the duo? Well, initially, a lot of them weren't. You can see on old streams that Pepino was supposed to be used a lot more for the level at some point, which is really interesting to me. Finally, this level is the only level in the game to have a nerfed secret. So far. Yeah, so the third secret in this level had some issues early on, and as somebody who P-ranked it before it was nerfed, I can honestly say that this was probably necessary. Now there's these rat fairies who give you some toppings while you're in the secret, which is nice. They also appear in another part of the level, so it's not like they were made specifically for the secrets, but it's still interesting. Space level, let's go. Originally, this level's set name was All of Intergalactic. That changed when a random person in one of McPig's streams said Deep Dish 9, which ended up sticking a lot more. That's a pretty neat way to start off this section. Also, all three backgrounds for this level received very minor tweaks across the level's lifespan. Really, the only noticeable difference at all is the shading, and that's about it. Kind of basic, but also pretty interesting. And finally, the second achievement for this level is a reference to the very old game Asteroids. I know it's a bit on the nose, but I still think it's funny. Okay, golf has a lot to unpack, let's dive in. First of all, the existence of this level came from a joke. I'm not kidding. So, one of the earlier builds of Pizza Tower had this level idea thrown in as a joke for April Fool's Day, but as developments went on, this slowly became more and more of a, yeah, let's work on this one type of level for the dev team. So now, we have an entire level dedicated to golfing. Also, this level was tied with Crust Cove for having the highest S rank threshold, sitting at 23,000 points. It's basic, but still neat. Finally, the title card for this level is heavily based on Doom, seeing the hellish landscape, Pepino holding a shotgun, and the all caps text in the card itself. Oh yeah, now that's rad. Noise's boss fight is honestly a super interesting one, so let's discuss it a bit. First of all, the Noise is very heavily based off of an old Domino's Pizza mascot, the Noid. He shares a lot of similar traits with that character, although clearly the Noise is a lot cruder, which I don't personally have a problem with. It's funny. Also, during multiple stages of development, the Noise was playable. Now, this doesn't have much to do with the stage, except if you were hypothetically playing the Noise, the Doys would replace the fight. And considering how the noise is going to be playable soon, I'm willing to bet that we'll actually see this counterpart come to life soon enough. And finally, the song title for this fight may or may not have a typo in the sound test room. So in the OST releases for this game, it's called Pumping Hot Stuff. But in the sound test room, it's labeled as Pimpin' Hot Stuff. Apparently this could be a reference to one of the early builds, but I have no clue, I can't say for sure. Regardless, it's different, and that's pretty cool.
okay, this lore is actually somewhat interesting, so let's cover the trivia. First of all, it would be a disservice to cheese slimes everywhere if I didn't talk about Snotty. So, there's this slime called Snotty that's sitting on this floor. Now, you could do two things with this guy when you first meet him. One, you could simply walk by and ignore him, which leads to you getting an extra badge on your save file. Or two, you kill him. This leads to a gravestone in his name being placed on this floor, which is hilarious. I didn't actually know who Snotty was before I finished my main playthrough, so to this day, he's still dead. Ha! Also, this floor has two secret rooms. One of which leads to a back alley that has the unused Mr. Car enemy, and the second features Noisette, the Noise's wife, running a shop. It also has the vigilante chilling, drinking some coffee. He is not a fan of you being here. You should leave. Finally, and this one is just the biggest stretch ever, but apparently the noise broke through the background in the achievement room. Listen, I told you the floors were gonna have some stretches. This level is really interesting, so you know there's bound to be some fun stuff sitting around here. First of all, the bacon room. Okay, so this room is well known in the game if you're actively looking for it, but I still feel like I have to bring it up. So, next to the third taxi's exit in the first half of Pig City, there's a room right above it that leads to a bunch of bacon strips. This is the only place in the game with this topping type, and in the background, there's this pig who's watching you. If you sit here long enough, he'll eventually get close to the screen to give you a thumbs up. Nice. Also, on the topic of achievement trivia you wouldn't know unless you were going for everything, taunting with the pig NBCs in the level actually shows them taking a picture of you. Pretty cool stuff. Finally, there's a hidden enemy in the first room of the level, where you can meet him if you go through this hidden hole in the wall. His name is Grandpa Pepper, and getting hit by him gives you a new outfit. Now, that's cool and all, but something else that you might not know about him is that he's the only enemy in the entire game that can hit Pepino through invincibility frames. Why? Why him in particular? Let's get into this one. No intro here because it's boring. First of all, there's an unused room in this level with one less stupid rat in it. Yep, not kidding. That's the only difference between it and the final room, besides there also being sirens added to the ceiling. That is one of the funniest things ever, I'm not gonna lie. Also, the level gate for this level actually uses an outdated background. See, this is what the main background is for the first section of the level, and as you might notice, it's a lot grayer. Well, the old background isn't like this, and it matches very closely with the gate. Weird. And finally, the chef task whoop this is the only achievement in the entire game that directly mentions the secret eyes. That is really obscure, and it's also so pointless. I love trivia. Ooh, this level is a fascinating one. Let's talk about it so you can see what I mean. First of all, crouching on any poop tile in this level for 10 seconds gives you an outfit. Lovely. In addition to this fun secret, one of the backgrounds of the level references another indie game, Anton Ball Deluxe. This graffiti is of Pepino with a cheese slime ball in his hand, drawn similarly to that game's art style. Pretty cool stuff. And finally, this level used to have a whole lot going on with its escape sequence. For one, it once had its own unique song, Toxic Rave. And unlike a few other cut unique escape songs, this one was never planned to be used anywhere else in the game. On top of this, getting Jerome was supposed to be the lap 2 here apparently? That's odd, but it's super interesting regardless. RRF is one of the levels of all time in this game, so let's discuss it a bit. Starting off, Pepperman was once planned to make his debut as a playable character here. Despite this being scrapped, I still think the idea itself is pretty fun, and it also makes a lot of sense, too. Also, this level is the only level in the game to use three main songs before pizza time. And just an opinion here, but all of them are good, too. So, no complaints from me. And finally, Pepino has a unique idol animation here, where he's seen trying to warm himself up. Poor, poor Italian. This boss fight has a lot more going on than you might expect, so why don't we discuss some of it? First of all, Fake Pepino initially had a much smaller, yet just as important role in the game. 
Early on, he was used for some levels as either an enemy or an easter egg, which I find to be pretty neat. On top of this, Fake Pepino does a lot of things differently compared to the other three main floor bosses. He has the least amount of HP, he has no second phase transition, and he doesn't appear on another floor in the game after being defeated, unlike every other boss before Pizza Face. Finally, the segment where you're getting chased by Fake Pepino actually uses remnants of a cut area in Pig City, which took place underground. Honestly, I would not have known this if I wasn't digging for it. That's really cool. The final floor in Pizza Tower. Wow, we actually have some stuff to talk about here. Nice. Starting off, this floor has two secrets like the slum does, one of which containing the noise and snick in a laundromat-like area, and the other containing old mansion level assets and a whole lot of portraits of characters in the game. LORE! This floor is also the only floor in the game to have a boss fight come before a level, which makes it unique in the order sense. And finally, initially the floor was called Horror Passage, then changed to Terror Nation, and finally given its namesake that we have to this day, Staff Only. Talk about a history. This level is a weird one, but we'll try to cover what we can about it. So earlier in the video, I mentioned how this level shares a secret theme with Pizzascape, but the Pizzascape similarities don't end there. On top of that, the title card shares the exact same notes, except for the last note being out of tune, and the main track for the song sounds incredibly similar to Hot Spaghetti, but in a minor key. Yeah, the levels are actually pretty connected. And the reason for that is because initially, this level was actually a hard mode variation of Pizzascape, so that all tracks with this information. Also, have you ever noticed some of the backgrounds decorations here? Well, a couple of them are actually references to other characters. One of these is the Doys, which we've already briefly mentioned. And as for this pink Pepino lookalike, Petito. These are both apparently fan characters, so to see them in the game is actually really neat. And finally, in one of the updates for Pizza Tower, this level got a slight nerf to one particular section, which involves this ramp. This leads away from the entry door, and you need to go through it in order to complete pizza time. So yeah, needless to say, I think you can imagine why it gets destroyed nowadays. Let's be quiet for this section. Starting out, this level has a few jump scares, and most of these are pretty normal. But there's also a small chance that when you get jump scared, you actually see Pepino celebrating Oktoberfest with the topping animatronics. That's fun. There's also a pretty funny secret that was actually cut from one of the backgrounds, this one being text that references how uncanny some mascot popsicles can be sometimes. Look, you and I have both seen those Spongebob popsicles. We both know. Anyways, like I said, the text directly mentioning this joke was seemingly edited out of the background randomly, which is odd. It's such a fun joke, but why would they remove it? And finally, this is the only level in the game that has no maximum combo, theoretically. Topping monsters can infinitely respawn, and they all count towards the combo, so theoretically, you can get a massive combo here. Okay, we can stop being quiet now. This level is actually a really neat one, despite how basic it might seem on the surface. So, let's dive right in. First off, the level itself works very differently compared to every other level in the game. Pizza time here is always activated once you pick up the gun, so even compared to the crumbling tower of pizza, it stands out on its own. This makes this level the only level in the game to not have a Pillar John. It's also the only level in the game to punish you with time loss for entering secrets. Yikes. Oh, but if you end up beating this level first try on a save file, you earn a free outfit. Neat, I guess? And finally, this level used to be completely different. I think you could surmise that based off of how it works, but the older idea was still insane. So the level once had a genuine pizza time, and on top of this, the enemy variety was a whole lot bigger too. Nowadays, it's mostly war enemies and Pepino clones, but back then, there was a ton of stuff, which is interesting to see. Gustavo and Brick were also used more back then, as they helped you out more often. They still help you here, but only in specific areas. Cool. This boss fight is insane, so let's discuss it. 
To start out, let's talk about what Pizza Face does differently compared to the other bosses. He summons actual enemies in the tower itself to fight, and he also has three phases of his own and four more for the other returning bosses in the fight. Plus, his intro card shows some flashing red. Ew. Also, this boss fight doesn't actually reward a rank, but you still need to take zero damage to complete the floor's P-rank criteria. Guess what achievement I don't have yet? Yeah, yeah, skill issue, I know. Though for our final piece of trivia here, this apparently wasn't always the case regarding the rank rewarding. There's a scrapped icon of Pizza Face for the Pizza Granny to show, so it's implied that at one point, you could technically P-rank the boss fight. The final main level of Pizza Tower. This one is quite a spectacle, but let's discuss what we can. So, this level has the most enemy types in the entire game, but it's not all of them. Yeah, do you want to know who we're missing? Oh god. Okay, so in order, we're missing Mini John, Pencer, Pizza Box Goblin, Flying Anchovy, Kentucky Kenny, Gabagool, Pizanto, Eggplant Mobile, Treasure Chest Guy, Olive Trooper, Golf Demon, Big Cheese, Noisy, Ham Cuff, Box Stamper, Grabby Hand, Weenie, Giant Slime, Ghost King, Patroller, Flying Patroller, and Pepino Clone. <laughs> Got all that? I'm not saying that again, so I don't care. Also, there's quite a few things this level does uniquely that I figured I'd just knock out in one piece of trivia. This is the only normal level in the game that doesn't let you run a second lap, has no collectible toppings, has no Jerome, and has no title card song. That's a lot, and realistically, there's more to it too. You can also get a P rank for this level by simply maintaining a combo. That's pretty nice. Finally, this level can actually be activated on any floor in the game with console commands, as the tower itself is the level. I've always really enjoyed this, because you could just complete the game in less than a minute. Pretty funny stuff. This level shouldn't really count, but I'm throwing it in anyways, because why not? So to start out, the level not only gives you zero progression on the tower percentage itself, but also doesn't count towards the P-rank outfit when you P-rank it. Interesting. This level also has the longest song in the entire game, Secret Lock-In. And this song is often played twice in its entirety when you're playing the level too. Now that is something. And finally, this level is completely randomly generated. You never get the same sequence of secrets in the level, so it makes it a really fun challenge. And with that, the video is now over. Oh my god, I spent way longer making this than I'd ever like to admit, and honestly, I probably skipped over some really good trivia. So if you have anything you'd like to add, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear more Pizza Tower trivia, it's always really fun stuff. Also, I'd like to give some big shoutouts to Aldenity for Omens, Wapfa, Dan B, and Nicholas Vankoski for being $5 supporters of my channel. Thank you all so much, you rock. Now, as for me, I, I, I just need a minute. I have been talking for so long, I'm like, actually, goodbye, peace.